Creating Still Life Compositions Part 4 Finishing Touches Okay, so... So I've been working on building up my tones. Um, I've been darkening uh, where the shadows are. I've been starting to apply some of the cast shadows. Um, but I'm not done yet. I'm still gonna go back into it. There's a couple of things I wanna fix up. I wanna clean up some of my lines. Um, I wanna actually embolden and darken some of the shadows too to make a higher contrast. So that's, that, that's what I'm going to work on um, for the last part of this video. So let's get started on that. So throughout this video, I've been using different pencils uh, for lighter areas and darker areas. I'm no longer really going to be using the 3H, the lighter pencil. Um, I will actually continue using the HB, uh, but I'll be actually applying a darker pencil, the 6B, for some of the uh, darker areas. Now you can actually get darker tones by just pressing harder. If all you have is the number two pencil, um, you probably won't get as dark as I'm getting with the 6B, but you can get a, a fair amount of range just with one pencil, depending on how hard you press versus how light you press. So I will speed up this part of the video, but please just uh, observe how I'm darkening up different sections of this planter um, with the darker pencil and uh, eventually I'll blend it in with the blending stump and then go back over it again with another pencil. Looking over my source photograph, I'm noticing uh, how the eyes and the head of this planter look. Um, they're a little bit darker on the inside left side of each eye, so I have to start applying that now. But notice I'm working on many parts of this drawing at once. So I started blocking in the eye, uh, then I went up to the ear, then I went to the other eye, and now I'm working on the chin or bottom of the head of this planter. Again, just like before, I am applying my tonal shading with the pencil and then I'll go back over it with the blending stick and then probably go back over it again with another pencil. Okay, although I still have more to do, I'm gonna actually clean up the edges with the eraser as I go. All right, now I'm going to work on some details on this cube here, um, including darkening up each of the paw prints.
right, well, now before I go on, I'm noticing something. As I'm working on one section, my hand is actually uh, touching the rest of the drawing here. So I'm kind of smudging it. So I'm going to do is I'm gonna get a piece of regular paper and just put it down to sort of block my hand from doing any more damage to sections I've, I've, I have plan on working on some more. So just grab that here. So any paper will do, I'll just fold it in half and kind of be like a little protection against the rest of the drawing. All right, let me continue from here. Notice that I've emboldened my lines a little bit as I continue to blend. Um, this helps me define the form again as I'm blending. You kind of smudge it out and dull it a little bit. It helps uh, just to kind of keep sense of the actual object. Now I'm going back into the paw prints, darkening them up as best I can. And then I'll use the blending stump to uh, kind of give a overall shade on the whole entire section of this cube shape. All right, now that I've blended it out, I'm gonna start working on the cast shadow. Uh, so I've added some of the shadow coming off of the object onto the side of the cube, and now I'm blocking out the shadow on the table. Notice how I'm going back and forth from applying shading with the pencil to blending it out with the blending stump. I think it's important to kind of go back and forth uh, as you're working to get the best overall layering you can get. I'm pretty much happy how this first object came out. Um, really worked on trying to uh, increase the value range of uh, tonal shading here. I have some really dark areas. I'm using my eraser to create some highlights. Um, I'm gonna take a, a brief pause here and then we'll get to these other two objects in a, in a little while. I'm gonna do the same thing I did with this. I'm gonna start building up the tone slowly, playing around with uh, the, the pressure of the pencil, blending it with a blending stick or my finger. Um, and then cleaning up the edges and, and bringing back any of the highlights that I think it needs. All right, so I'm going to take a pause for now, and we'll come back in a little while. Now that I've finished the uh, first object, um, I'm going to go on to the fox statue here. I'll be doing the same thing as before. Um, darkening some of the areas, blending it some more, cleaning up the edges with the eraser, reapplying the highlights as needed. So let me start with that. Okay, so if I'm looking at my source photo, which I have up now, um, I'm gonna start by darkening up under its chin and on its uh, chest over here, and I'll start working with the legs and I'll do the cast shadow from the planter onto his back, legs, and tail, and I'll continue from there. So. Here we go. Oh, don't forget, uh, and so you don't smudge anything else. Wherever you're working, you wanna put a, a piece of paper down just so you don't kind of smudge as, you, as you're working. All right, here we go. Notice again how as I'm working on any of these objects, I'm going back and forth between different uh, pencils and the blending stump. I think it's really important to layer 
your mark making and to intermingle it with blending. So it's not just like drawing first, blending afterwards, and then you're done. It has to constantly be back and forth in order to create the desired effect. The details within the face of the fox was probably the most difficult part of this drawing. Um, just the way that the statue fell with the light, there was a lot of crevices and highlights and shadows throughout this object. So uh, I had to constantly go back and forth, darkening my tones, blending it out, um, looking over the source photo, seeing, really looking to see where the darker areas were, where the mid-tones were, and where the highlights were. Uh, and uh, this is the finished product more or less and I'll go back into it a couple more times just to kind of bring out some of the details again. All right, so the last thing I need to do here is the cup. Um, it's it's rounded, so I'm gonna be kind of shading it in like a cylindrical fashion, and I'll be darkening it, and then at the very end, I'll add a couple of highlights using the eraser. And here we go.
Notice as I shade the inside of this cup, um, when things are hollow on the inside, you want to actually flip the uh, darker areas with the lighter areas. This will give a greater sense of three-dimensionality as the light source will be hitting the inside opposite edge of the object, so the right side of this cup as opposed to the left um, on the inside. There are a few marks and details on this cup that came from its glazing that I'm going to apply using an eraser. Okay, now a few additional details. I can add some texture to the table it's on. Um, I can work on uh, getting, giving a little bit of a light tone on the background. Um, it's not perfectly a white wall it, with different shadows coming in. It's, it's more of a gray. I can also darken the cast shadow created by the fox. So I'm going to work on that now and then um, hopefully I can say this drawing is complete. In order to create wood texture, I am going to keep my lines loose and go back and forth and repeat them multiple times. I'm also going to blend them in with a blending stick just to kind of soften the lines that I'm making. Uh, and that's pretty much it. After I darken the cast shadows a little bit more, I'll start going over the cast shadow against the wall. Uh, it's where the fox, the shadow of the fox, uh, kind of hits the wall, so I need to make that a little bit darker than the rest of the background. Um, I find it easier to blend in larger spaces with something like a tissue uh, over the blending stick. I just think it's easier. Um, for the background, I'm also going to go back and forth with a lighter pencil, uh, like an HB, um, and I'm making hatch marks across the whole entire background, and I'll use the same paper towel to blend that in. Well, there you have it, boys and girls. A complex still life drawing created using multiple steps, right? So step one was just taking your objects and breaking them down into simple forms. Uh, step two was starting to add some detail and blocking out the shading. Um, step three was applying the uh, first round of shading, um, kind of getting a good value that way. And then the final step was going back into it and uh, really working on darkening some of the darker areas and, and, and um, cleaning up your lines and uh, creating some highlights. So hopefully uh, seeing this video, seeing the series of videos step by step will help you in uh, your own drawings and I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. So that's it for uh, this edition. This is John Hendricks saying happy drawing my friends and uh, that's all I got. All right, see you later.
Can't I? I uh, my hair is sticking up. Oh yeah, I could be a cool guy. Yes.